who said at the end of it that we can remain quiet so we stop the recording that just uh, keeps it nice and precise for the technology um apologies for absence i've got jeff reed and brian gallagher also got jim lang and apologies for um Rachel Walsh as well Disclosures of my red interests. Has anybody got any disclosures you'd like to use for this? Yep. Item three, the board plan for key cabinet decisions on page one and four. Yeah, nothing like chair, I think uh, two or three weeks ago since the last night. So to your attention, I think the issues um with all in this camp, this particular unit or order scheduled. Oh, yeah, the um, now on to the overview. Um, there we have Mark Jones and Paul Metcalf from Active Northumberland. Um, to present the report, and we also have Maureen Taylor to represent the council to get any questions. Jeff Watson, and a member of the department. Um, so I'll hand over to, to Mark and Paul for your presentation. Thank you very much. So, thank you. Um, I'd like to just run through uh, what I'd like to talk about um, this afternoon. So, just to give you a little bit on our, our background, um, a bit about our vision and the strategy. Financial performance 21 22, our current membership numbers for 21 22, usage and trends, our products based around our products, people, and places, and then our service improvement. So, um, Active Northumberland is a registered charity formed in 2014. Um, I'm not telling everybody what they already know, but I think for anybody who perhaps wasn't here last year, um, and it is a merger of five different um, leisure providers that were previously providing leisure um, services for the county. Um, the business is actually overseen by a board of 10 highly experienced voluntary non-executive trustees. And we now have around about 670 employees consisting of a mixture of contracted and casual employees in uh, full and part-time roles. The majority of our facilities are actually owned by um, Northumberland County Council uh, and they're leased back to Active Northumberland who in turn manages and operates those um, for the services under a partnership service level agreement. And uh, at the current, um, we're operating nine large leisure centres, so um, things like Berwick, uh, the larger centres which include leisure facilities as well as the, the sporting sides. And uh, as well as that, we've also got two sports and welfare centres and the Y Beach Huts and a sleeping centre. And as our name suggests, all of our activity uh, undertaken within the county of Northumberland. Um, during the last 12 months, we have seen a slight change to, to our portfolio and we have actually um, transferred operation of four sites. Um, the first of those being the Sporting Club Cramlington, which uh, left our portfolio on the 1st of January. Um, Sporting Club Pruder on the 31st of March and Sporting Club Bedlington, which was the 1st of September. And then just in addition to that, we also have the Pegasus Riding School, which is now transferred over to Kirkley Ball. Uh, and that's with conjunction with the uh, County Council as well in terms of uh, that transfer over to Kirkley. Uh, the reason for, for, for moving some of those is that they were more appropriately operated by um, some of the, well, the, the new existing um, operators. and those were actually loss making enterprises for, for Active Northumberland and then have been managed on a, on a much more um, efficient basis. Um, okay, so our vision and strategy is actually to be the best community leisure and wellness provider in the UK, and we will, and our strategy is to get more people being active more often and for longer, and attract more customers by showcasing our people, places, and product and help our customers make the most of our facilities, equipment and expertise. Uh, we'd like to identify those who um, support to stay active on their fitness journey and to increase member attendance, satisfaction and value. Just want to read that out just so everyone can do it. 
So with regards to um, the national context, I think this slide is actually quite quite powerful in as far as understanding how the, the, the sector has actually come back following the, the, the lockdowns and the, the COVID-19 um, pandemic. And this is information uh, statistics from Sport England Moving Communities. Uh, and they're saying that the average uh, return rate for, for our sector is actually between 70 and 80 percent, um, which um, just sets a, a backdrop just to how, how the industry is performing in general. Obviously, we're talking about 21-22. We can obviously talk about as we go through the presentation and, and questions afterwards around what's happening in 22-23. But at that present time, that was the average of, of um, 70 to 80%. During that period, many operators actually failed. Um, many um, many <laughs> trusts actually handed back keys to local authorities, and uh, and we saw quite a lot of um, leisure pools, leisure centres, gyms around the country closing. So that was pretty much the, the the backdrop of what we were sort of trying to struggle our way through as we went into 2021-22 20, actual year. So what does that look like in terms of our financial performance? Well, what we thought we'd try and do just to, to put something into, into real context is to compare against 2019, 2020, which actually was a bit of a, a golden year for our sector. Um, during 2019, 20, Active Northumberland in particular were doing very well. Our memberships were growing, our revenues were growing. Uh, actually, we were doing quite nicely. Obviously, 2020, 21, which we reported on last year, we saw an absolutely devastating impact on our business. Uh, but I'm pleased to say that actually, um, despite all of the challenges and despite only operating seven months or practically seven months out of the 12 months last year, uh, we actually turned in a very decent revenue performance and actually we're only just under uh, £500,000 short of our 2019-20 target. That resulted in, and this is to, to, to yet to be signed off, but that's resulted in a £371,000 loss against our, our budgeted uh, forecast of £1.875 million. Uh, that's in the backdrop of a reduced management fee, which we've been receiving, um, and that's re reduced by £500,000 uh, um, since 2019-20. But we have seen a, a really successful return of members uh, and, and better than expected um, trading across all of our streams and revenues. The management restructure was done um, around about September last year. Uh, that was a, a considerable saving of £370,000 to try and cut down on some of our costs. And that's despite also um, some really strong headwinds in terms of increased utility costs and the cost of the national living wage increasing by over 8%. We've obviously got some further challenges coming forward for 22-23. Um, as you can see there, we've got a 1.65 million expected utility cost in addition um, to what we were planning. Um, and we've also got a, an increase of £425,000 in additional staffing costs in 22-23 due to the national living wage. Um, staffing numbers um, are a real challenge for our industry sector at the moment in terms of qualified staff. That is a real significant challenge for us uh, at the moment in terms of restricting our growth uh, and also just trying to sort of tick along on a normal basis. Um, we are doing quite a lot about that and we'll, we'll go through that as we go through the presentation, but this is a, a, an industry-wide um, problem across the, across the country. And of course, headwinds going forwards is that the economic outlook is, is obviously looking a little bit uncertain as we now move into the winter 22-23, and obviously we're expecting that to have some form of impact on membership. But let's look at the, the membership, actually, and again, I'd like to sort of just compare that to, to the pre-COVID levels, because I think it's important to see how we've come back from the, from the lockdown. And actually, we're now at a total of 16,703 members. Um, that's uh, record numbers. Um, and in fact, just to give you a bit of a, a tip off, for, for as of um, the first of the month, uh, we're now currently at 17,300 members. So we're still continuing to increase. The, the growth um, in our membership has been many different factors, but one of the obviously principal factors is, is the investment that's gone into our portfolio. Um, so part of the £65 million investment that Sunderland County Council has done in the general portfolio, that is clearly making a, a big impact on, on where we're seeing some significant growth. So if I take, for example, Pontyland, which actually was our, our smallest centre for membership, for fitness membership at 838, we've seen an increase of uh, 1,443 members there. So you can see that that's just an absolutely phenomenal and, and over expected um, 
and what we've got in terms of different kinds of tealins. So um, one of the things that we've discovered with Pontinas as well is that we've attracted customers from across the border as well, which um, we don't tend to do too often in, in many of our centres, but that's really people are coming across from, from much further out to try and you know, utilise excellent facilities. And it's just worth noting there that over 93.5% of our members choose to pay by our direct debit and our members who are actually using the, the fit the streets. So obviously one of the important parts of our, our business is monitoring our, our cancellations. Uh, one of the things that we're really pleased to see is that actually our cancellation numbers have been going down. Um, again, I think, you know, in terms of satisfaction, I think that's been a, a major um, increase in the fact of people wanting to stay. Obviously, you would have expected a, a slight um, decrease in cancellations because obviously everyone's coming back from, um, from the lockdown and from COVID, so everybody's wanting to get back into the gyms. Um, you'll see that Ashington has the highest number of cancellations, um, but overall it's it's a very small percentage based on the very high number of members that we've got over Ashington, which is over 3,000. One of the things that we've introduced and invested in during this year um, and towards the end of uh, the last financial year, but now into 22-23, is our membership experience advisors. Um, so we've created a team, one in each of our, our regional areas, to support the onboarding of new members. Um, we look at our statistics, we can see that actually members who are onboarded and have a, a, a great fitness plan early doors tend to stay with us much longer than somebody who doesn't. So we've, we've significantly invested in that team of people. And of course, as well as onboarding, they're also looking at people who might want to think about you know, moving to the, uh, the membership. So that's proving to, to have some, a, a real impact already this, uh, this year. One of the things that we have also noticed as part of the let's call it the, the, the great reset that, that actually um, COVID has afforded us. Uh, obviously, there's not many businesses get the opportunity to, to suddenly reset their business uh, because usually everything's running at 100 miles an hour. But obviously, during the closure period, we were able to, 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 to look at a lot of the areas of our business. And one of the areas we looked at is, is when members were coming back, were we actually getting brand new members or were we actually getting uh, members who had previously been with us and had cancelled um, prior to, to the pandemic or during the pandemic? And one of the things that we noticed is that actually from the chart here is that six, we managed to um, get 670 members back, but interestingly, they joined different centres to who they'd actually belonged to previously. Um, so just to give you an example there, we've got 108 movers from Ashington, 38 of them have moved to Blythe, 19 to Pontyland and 18 to Concordia. But that then led us to look at this in, in, a, in a wider context and we've actually looked at our statistics and we can actually see that the holistic approach we have to membership across Northumberland, if you being a member, you can actually go to any one of our locations, is that we're seeing a member who might be a member and when they join, just let's say joining Ashington, but they might also be using or choosing to use uh, Morford or Pontyland or any of the other sites in, in the programme. So one of the challenges that we've got as a business is that while their revenue will be hitting our business, um, let's say at Ashington, the actual um, the actual consumption might be taking place at one of our other centres. So the cost of actually operating and, and facilitating that, that activity will be at, at another location. So that we're actually uh, looking at how we how we cope with that as we go on. And I think actually one of the, the reasons I sort of mentioned that Ashington and Morford is, as you're all aware, we've got the new centre opening in Morford in, say, spring. Um, and uh, we do expect to see quite a shift from the Ashington membership that will probably be consuming at Morford. We will be expecting to see new membership there at Morford too. So one of the interesting things is, is just look at the fitness memberships by age. Um, one of the key growth areas we've had within the business is around our junior members. Um, this was something that we launched as a brand new membership in, um, in May last year. Um, we've seen 1,160 junior memberships uh, come into the business, which is just phenomenal. We trialled it at Pont Eland, obviously being a, a great catchment area given the school uh, and the footfall that we had there so that was a very natural place to, to trial but it was so successful there that we ran that across the entire business and hence the reason we've seen a, a massive uptake in, in membership there and we've also seen a, a significant increase in the uh, 26 to 45 year olds um, one of the the areas that you'll see from um, if we're looking at the over 65s we're still seeing quite a, a, a lull in the over 65 market coming back into um, activity with the with the leisure centres 
dependence when in particular with fitness and i think that that can be due to, to many different reasons but i think uh, there's a large proportion of that is, is still a lot of nervousness um, around coming back and being in sort of big areas um covid still still is obviously in, in the general environment and i think certainly when we've spoken with our, our walking groups and things who are, are seeing significant numbers down still they're still probably about 25 percent down from what they were pre-covid and i think that's sort of filtering through from that age group right across our, our business so that's something that we're really trying to focus on at the moment and trying to engage with that age group to try and get them back into the centers one of the most exceptional Parts of our, our, our performance, I think, about last year is, is around our swim lessons and our learn to swim. Um, as you can see there, we've uh, seen a 39% increase in, in our learn to swim program, um, and we've seen 1,819 extra swimmers that are learning how to swim. Um, the largest increase coming from Pontyland, uh, followed by Wentworth, Pruda, and Blythe. And I think you can see from there is that we've made some significant investments in those pools, and I think that's given us that extra capacity there. Uh, and it has certainly helped us to do that. I think just going back to that point where I was saying about the great reset, one of the things that we were able to do um, as part of that reset was to look at all of our groups, look at all of our school groups that were coming in and look at our timetabling and, uh, and rescheduling. And that's enabled us to be far more efficient in our programming, which has uh, led to, to some excellent results. So SPA membership, um, our SPA membership has increased enormously, as you can see, plus 50%. Um, I'm tongue in cheek slightly there in terms of we've obviously got um, some new sites there, again, with the, the new investment, the brand new SPA uh, facility at Berwick. Um, we've got the brand new um, SPA at Blythe, and we've also got the um, SPA at Pontyland, which is doing particularly well. Um, in terms of our, our, our SPA membership, 62%, interestingly, is, is male. Um, when we've sort of looked into this um, to try and sort of dig down as why we've got this disparity between males and females is that we probably feel that some of our changing areas probably need softening slightly to appeal to, to, to the female. But one of the great things is, is that we've been there uh, and a bit of an update to this slide really, which I haven't uh, been able to put in, but uh, we were the uh, winner of the Spa of the Year, the English Hair and Beauty Awards. But just this uh, last week, we've also won two other awards for um, East um, Beauty awards and um, with two awards on top, so uh, we're doing really, really well. So as you can imagine, with an increase in uh, in membership, our, our usage should be uh, increasing significantly too. And as you can see, we've got 22,000 uh, more workouts than February last year, or uh, February um, 2020, uh, pre-COVID. And 96% of our gym usage um, is by members, uh, which is uh, a standard. Pontine and Berwick added 13,000 of the 22,000 sessions, um, but that's mainly due to the, the, the capacity that we've seen, the increased capacity of those new gyms. Um, Ashington is still the most popular gym, uh, but that's mainly because of 3,300 members we've got there. That is by far our, our largest centre. Uh, and again, just sort of touching back on the, 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 the age bracket in terms of the age demographic, but went with seeing a decline versus pre-pandemic. Pre uh, but that is literally down to the 65-year-old um, um, market, not coming back in quite the same way. Our fitness fast dependence. Um, now, this is where it is not running in parallel with what we've seen in terms of the gym use. So we've only increased by 8%, um, but there are reasons behind that, which is that although we were coming out of the um, COVID-19, and I hate to keep Sort of banging on about the COVID-19 piece, but actually, although we were coming out of that, we were still operating under quite um, severe restrictions around uh, space and, and airspace and airflow. Uh, so that has had an impact on, on some of our, our figures there. But despite that, we've still 8% increase on, on pre-pandemic levels. One of the things that, that has still, um, I, I guess, affected um, fitness class attendance is also just the rise of digital. Uh, sure that most people in the room were at some point or other during the, the lockdown were using digital and, uh, and home experience and that, that has still continued although we are seeing a, a drop in that hence the reason our, our current figures are now far in excess of the top seven percent. So general swim usage um, is plus 8,645 sessions over February. Um, one of 
of the, the things we just like to point out there is that when we compare February of February 20, that does include the half term um, surge that you would have and you'd expect to see in February. So when we compare those figures, uh, we've worked out that actually if we'd have taken out the February half term um, surge there for 20 uh, for, uh, for 2020, um, actually that we could have added on about another four and a half thousand sessions there. So the 22 and 22 percent of our um, swingers are by non-members. So we compare that to the 96 percent of members in terms of gym. Um, that shows that we've got a lot of casual um, usage through swimming rather than gym. So just looking at our products, um, I just wanted to sort of highlight because when you read the report, it's quite easy to sort of get lost with all of the different um, sort of health programs that we have as part of our, our offering. And actually this just gives you a very easy uh, on the eye uh, way of seeing exactly what we've got across all of our sites. But we've got a wide and diverse range of different health programs. Uh, there's nine particular individual health programs with 38 individual courses delivered over multiple sessions across the county. Um, and we've just got, uh, just highlighted there that we've now got the new Parkinson's group um, that's just started over in Berwick. And uh, we also got the uh, the MS groups as well, which are new as well already. So one of our, our real successes has been our, our GP referral program and Mementa. Um, it was very, very difficult coming back out of COVID because we actually had to start the program almost from a cold start. Um, basically, despite that cold start and despite the fact that um, Obviously, the program had, had virtually come to a, to a complete standstill. We still managed to get within 10 of our target of 1,000 exercise on referrals, although we did, I'm really pleased to say that we did overachieve on the uh, on the weight referrals, so um, and we over exceeded by 217. Um, one of the things that we tried to do, although the, the program had, had, had had to cease during the, the lockdown period, we did still um, do welfare calls with a lot of our um, participants to try and make sure that they were still um, the exercise and just making sure that they're okay basically and that our program was sort of suspended. But obviously what we are doing now is that we're working with public health to try and make sure that we can continue to expand the program and uh, increase the, the numbers across the, across the county and all of our locations. The other one of our sort of star uh, programs is the Man's on the Move. Um, we had some particular challenges around mums, obviously, because they were unsure of what was the best thing to do um, post pandemic and coming back. Um, we could actually initially only do the outdoor sessions and in very limited numbers. So it wasn't particularly social or engaging, which is obviously one of the that was one of the main attractions for, for the others. Um, the positives are that actually going forward, so that our Sport England funding is going to take us till the end of March uh, next year. Um, we've actually increased the number of classes. Uh, we've now got a, a choice of 10 different classes, uh, a mixture of both social and exercise. And the registration is now at an all time high. So really happy with that. And uh, we've got all of the mums on the move um, classes available at both Blythe, Ashington and Concordia. However, we've just launched uh, new antenatal classes, which are exclusively at Berwick and Willow to, to increase the programme. So just having a quick look at our people, um, I'm going to quantify this slide because it looks as though we've just slashed the workforce, which actually isn't the case. But actually, pre-pandemic January 20, uh, we were at, at 993. We're currently now um, in the, I think we're now at 630. Um, the reason for that is that we've seen a, a natural reduction of people during the, the lockdown period who had uh, gone out and seek see other alternative employment. Um, there's a lot of people who had left the industry. One of the, the, the real benefits that we've seen coming out of lockdown is, is changing our systems and processes is that we're now matching our, our activity and our um, demand with our resources. Um, so actually we have managed to, to, to work out where we can be more efficient. Um, and actually we have now transferred a lot of our, our contracts towards um, full time and permanent contracts as opposed to casual staff. So, um, so there's been a lot of natural wastage from, from, from the business, which has been great. In terms of our, our apprenticeships, we've now launched our new apprenticeship scheme um, so that most of our apprenticeships have actually completed their apprenticeships prior to, uh, to, to lockdown. So we've now, now commenced our, our new apprenticeship scheme. We've now got nine leisure duty managers, which are internal, going through a, a training program. We've got nine leisure operations, which are new, and we've now got a business administration as well. 
and then just to try and help ourselves as you say earlier we're obviously struggling as the rest of the industry is in terms of attracting new um, swim teachers fitness instructors and we're actually working with the uh, institute of swimming uh, with their swim, swimming academy and we're actually putting through 13 of our own learners um, so we've got a few swim teachers in the program one of the, the things that we've introduced to the business also is our employee training platform. So we're working with FutureFit, uh, their platform, which is the Flex platform. We launched that in September 21. Um, we've got all of our um, staff members uh, logged into that uh, platform, and it basically gives it a fully re reportable platform to the business and also to the individuals. So it records their entire workforce training and qualifications all in one place. It gives them instant record validation. Um, and it assists team members to keep up to date and reminds them to keep up to date when their qualifications or their modules are coming to, to, to an expiry. Um, it allows for flexible completion of modules, both mandatory and optional, and it includes things such as uh, fire safety, mental health awareness, and safeguarding. At that time, the, um, at the end of March, we had 559 activated accounts and 85% of the workforce were fully up to date. Uh, and when I say fully up to date, that means that um, both the mandatory and the optional modules, sort of the mandatory uh, modules are all uh, up to date. <laughs> Just uh, having a quick look at our, our places then. So um, obviously, as we've said, there's been this huge 65 million pound capital investment. Uh, a lot of that has now been delivered, which I'm pleased to say. There's some quick picks there of uh, Berwick, which is uh, phase one. Uh, is completed. Uh, phase two um, is about to be handed over, which is the sports hall, which will be this week. As I say, Concordia has seen um, some enhancements within the um, spa area, um, and that's already been delivered. Blythe, the complete refurbishment of Blythe has now been complete. Um, I'm seeing some really encouraging um, results from our, our fitness memberships and just general golf play, cafe experience and revenues are all coming very strong now. We've just recently taken uh, possession of New Biggin uh, uh, with the refurbishment there with the, as you can see there, a brand new sports hall floor and a new roof uh, and a complete new spinning studio and, uh, and a new gym. And obviously a big picture there of our, our Hive Cafe at Blythe. And then finally, uh, Ponteland, which um, as you're aware, it seems like we've been sort of launching Pontilan forever and a day, but as you'll be aware, when we first opened Pontilan, I think we opened for two days and then closed. And then, of course, our, our main first year really was um, was last year. Um, and uh, yeah, I'll just speak for themselves on that. But obviously, we've got still some things that are up underway, the biggest thing being Morpeth. Um, we're really looking forward to taking the keys at Morpeth. Um, most of you have uh, been seeing the pictures and uh, I know some of you have actually been visiting to see the progress, but uh, we're literally only what, probably about two or three months away now from, uh, from taking the keys there. There's also quite a number of other uh, initiatives that we're still working on in terms of our, our capital investment. Um, there's significant works uh, still to take place at, at Concordia. Uh, there's a big glazing project that's required to replace all of the glazing on the front of the building. Uh, we are currently undergoing some um, significant works on the roof um, to repair lots of uh, leaks that we've had there for, for a while and also to replace all of the um, air handling units. And there's also plans to refurbish uh, some of the um, even to So looking at some of our service improvement aims, um, we actually launched back in uh, June uh, of this year uh, our, our new business transformation strategy um, due to normally what we would normally do um, in the usual year would be to go around and, and do sort of um, workshops with all of the all of the teams. But because of the, the light touch we've got in terms of our, our staffing at the moment across all of our centres because we're challenged with uh, both illness and also with the lack of qualified staff, um, which is restricting our growth. We've actually done it digitally. So we've actually launched via a series of videos about exactly what our, our new message, our vision, mission and values are going forward for 22 to 25. Um, to give you some highlights, uh, we've got the new staff recognition programme, we've got the rollout of the new apprenticeship programme, which I've just talked about. We've got the extension of the qualifications development program to try and um, upskill our, our workforce. Our places that I've just talked about, so the opening of uh, Morpeth, um, the opening of Full Berwick, which will be in spring 2023, 
um, opening of Berwick, which is uh, sorry, new Bigham, which has already happened. And we're also looking to invest in uh, Wentworth with the new soft play area. Um, so we had to close our, our previous uh, soft play area. And we're now active Northumberland are investing in completely new equipment. And NCC will be uh, investing in uh, of the cap area. We're also looking from a product perspective, um, improved recycling program and environmental strategy. Uh, we've got a brand new website that's uh, being developed as we speak, and we're looking at seeing that delivered in quarter one next year. Um, further custom app innovations. So um, one of the, the really key things that we've been working on in the last over the last two years is, is, is improving our app experience and actually most of our activity now, and certainly most of our bookings are actually take place via the app. And actually feedback from customers is that they, they really prefer working on that basis and then all of that is being done in conjunction with all our partners and of course our, our biggest partner being being ncc and uh, i guess this is probably a very opportune moment to, to, to obviously thank london county council for all the support they've given us over the over the last couple of years which should as you probably realize has been a very tumultuous time for, for the business and a very difficult time for the business and uh, we're extremely grateful for the support you've Thank you very much. And firstly, congratulate you on your big recovery. Um, after a lot of have been very difficult time, so just to open to the floor for any questions. Fantastic. Yeah, can I just ask what about um, someone said to me uh, that they were being paid minimum wage, but I heard you say national living wage is what you pay. That's right. And you uh, fifty three percent of your uh, work on contract. Do national living wage apply to all your employees? Correct. Right. Thank you very much. Yeah, how's the frontiers going? I mean, the high bar, it, is it working? It is. I hear bits and bobs. Yeah. I witness what I call a gang of thugs trying to get in about 40. Seems to happen on a Thursday night in Frontier. Uh, are we on top of that? Yeah. And then I've got a more wider conversation. Yeah, certainly. I, I know that there has been uh, reports, reported instance um, of, of anti-social behaviour, let's call it, in, 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 the, in the area. But certainly in terms of inside the centre, there, there's been no um, particular events that certainly cause any concern. No, no, I, I mean, I'm fully aware of the incident. Um, I think there's, there's been no further repercussions around the leisure centre of that. I think the number of junior gym members that we've got from the school is, is, is a testament as to how we're interacting with the with the juniors um, and sort of trying to, to off delay or, or keep away from from the side and the social behaviour. I think that the, 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 the junior membership at, at Point Hill and school, from Point Hill and school at, at Point Hill and the centre is extremely high. And so there's a good interaction between the centre staff there and, and the juniors. Yeah, I should declare I am a member of ACRI. However, that some of the booking is, is, is for someone like me, suppose I've got a meeting later on. This meeting finishes very quickly. And I think, oh, I'm good to swim for because it's like lane swimming and all that. You just don't know when it's open, don't know if I can get in. But I'm sort of, I'm, I'm a member, but I'm at that point thinking, do I really want to pay for this? Because I'm, I'm probably not using it as much as I should because it's restricted with the, the lane booking through whatever. It, 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 it's, it's not the way it was pre-19. And I, are we hanging on to all these booking systems that require? No, so, so I think, um, I mean, basically with, obviously we, we like you to try and book through the app, but you don't have to book the app. So you are able to turn up and actually uh, see if there's availability. Obviously the benefit of having it is the fact that you can see at any given time if there is availability. So obviously never is, but now re reduces the, uh, the the disappointment. But uh, I think you know the, the fact that if there's not any availability is a testament to the fact that we've increased our membership, you know, threefold in, in the centre, mm -hmm. and it is actually just incredibly well used. And I think that's where it lends itself well to having the app because obviously it then manages. It's just, I'll finish with this. It's just that you know you have you know years ago. I've and then I'll do fast lane. 
then the medium lean as you get older. And now I'm getting a lot older. It's the easy lean, but you can't get in it. Yeah. You know, so just saying, it, 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 have a look again there. I think, sir, let me just come in there. I think on the app, there's also a general trim tab a lot of the time as well. It's all during the day. So the, sometimes general trim during the day. So I think the, the lead trim might come up first, but there's also other sessions going on at the same time. I think one of the things that we have um, worked on over the last three months and have introduced, and you may have seen it, but actually when you go onto the app, app and, and you look for a swim, let's say a Pontiland, we've actually put it now so that if Pontiland is full, it gives you the option to look and see what the availability is at other locations. So we're trying to make sure we're maximising the opportunity where there is space in other parts of the portfolio. Because going back to what I said earlier, is that you know we take a holistic approach in terms of the membership. So when you take a membership with us at one of the centres, you can use any of the other centres. So that's uh, and that's, that's proving to be very successful actually. Councillor Clark, give us space. Essentially, as a prison, is there a separate plan say, to try and get the elderly? Yeah, so, so we've actually um, got a, a bit of a steering group on that within the business, looking at how we can try and engage better with the, with the age bracket of 65. We were looking at sort of marketing ways that we can reach out to them, but also looking at how we can work with some of the groups and areas that we're looking at. Like it's work, work, for example. Uh, Groups like that, so definitely got a steering plan on really trying to, to penetrate that age demographic. Well, we did. We, we well, we'd always identified that there was a there was a, a an opening that's for, for for that age group. Um, one of the areas previously, I think, it had always been considered that it didn't want to disaffect our normal, you know, our adult membership in the gyms who hadn't been used to having children into, into the gyms. But I think, you know, once we trialled it at, at Pontine and we saw that it worked, we obviously restricted some of the time. So it's not a carte blanche across all of the time periods, but we put it in sensible times. It means that if you are an adult member and you don't want to be there in and around children, you can choose and select times when they're not present. Um, but certainly we, we've not seen any adverse uh, reaction from our, our adult members in terms of uh, allowing the children to see things. Just one more on that. I think we've probably got an opportunity this winter to try and give um, the elderly population an insight as to what our leisure centres look like. We just signed up for all of, all of our big nine sites. are going to be warm places. And so they're, going to be, so they're going to be the safe places for anybody to go at any, at any time of the day. Come and, and, and get a warm and charge your phone or charge your device and just buy open our sites up. And so anybody can come in. It gives an opportunity for people to come and see what facilities, what activities are available. Also, you sort of migrate into the term into usage. Sounds really positive. Uh, Councillor Clark. Well done, and I'm pleased that I've both sent us out the facelift as well. Just got a couple of things right. Um, in some of the centres, the swimming pool centres in like North Kingshead area, the fill in that vacant slots where it's not so busy and they do these sessions called a uh, swim to train. It's only a pound. Some people can do it. Um, also, before COVID, lots of uh, sports development offices, as I would call them, come into community centres and they do dance classes in the community centres for young people. And that's prices. Same with the elderly. Yeah, I had a very, very busy group of elderly people. Because obviously, I think it might be down to staff shortages, like you've just said. Um, Sports development officers don't go out and work in the community centres like our own now that they used to. And if they did, they would be meeting members of the community that just couldn't. Have you got any plans for that in the future? Well, we, we, we did work very closely with the sports development team um, from NCC. So they, they used to work in conjunction with um, that managed that. that, that. Um, but obviously, during the, the lockdown, the sports development team were repurposed, and I think they're now back out into the community. I, I, I talked first to them. I don't know. Oh, no, I don't know if they've been there. Never come back to the community centres <clears throat> where um, young people who just can't afford sports centre fees, elderly who can't afford sports centre fees, and perhaps don't want to go into the big sports centre, they want to go to 
80 percent of what they used to don't have that access anymore because they haven't got their links anymore well, we're certain we're certainly completely re-engaged with the sports development team and certainly i can feed back any it's really useful because the children who never go to centre, the parents don't have the money, and a really sometimes don't want to go in front of the community centres, things like that. But if it's when it's trained, which was only a point of session, then go and implement any things like that. I certainly would would like to look at where we could do that. I think where we are really ch superbly challenged at the moment is around um, staffing, uh, being able to do that. We're, we're literally using every person that we've got that's, that's qualified to be yeah. able to deliver, and they're delivering for for what and they're coming in. So if, if we had spare, we would certainly be looking to do things like that. Yeah, yeah not the only sector that's struggling with yeah. staff. It's right across the board. Mm -hmm. yeah. A lot of, yeah, I'd like to say a couple of things. The first thing is, I think people should realise uh, how difficult it's been for us to support the last year. You've touched on it, um, but with COVID, uh, fueled crisis, but also the, the economy. Oh, I mean, that has affected so much, so much of what they're trying to do. And they've also done been tremendously useful for things like. COVID vaccinations, um, you know, the amount of work that they did, the staff that they've employed, you know, he didn't even mention that, but every time you have a vaccination, it ends up not making any money, you know. I think it's been tremendous um, what we're trying to do. One of the comments that keeps coming up, that, that and you touched on it before, was uh, the amount of people who use sports sets, the, the percentage of People in the county who use sports. How do, is there a national figure of what, how many people use sports centres? And if there is, how how do, do we compare? Because I believe six or seven percent of the population use sports centres. I never use a sports centre. I never will use it anymore. Let's be honest. So there will be a certain number of people, and babies don't, and young ones. Well, babies do. But yeah. Swimming pools. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, but there's a, but you know what I mean. There's a big use is going to be. I would, put, I don't know, fifteen to fifty foot, something like that. I think, I think uh, this, this, the stand, the standard for gym membership is fifteen percent of your population. Fifteen maximum. Fifteen. Like you we're you less never, than that. No. Approximately there. But I think there's there's a there's a difference between the the the, the gym usage as well as the as to, to perhaps saying is in terms of you know, leisure centres so I mean obviously there's a difference there but yes we can specify for, for, for oh, also 15 percent of the people in Northumberland will use gym. leisure but not necessarily ours no no a gym as opposed to a leisure centre so if you, you could be okay. going to a leisure centre for something other than the gym um, so so we, we could definitely identify the total addressable market let's say from a gym perspective but not necessarily from a leisure because it's very very wide varied mm -hmm. um, reasons for people wanting to use the centre. It could be so they wanted the soft play, it could be the climbing wall, it could be you know, it could be it's, it's, it's difficult then to get your, your hand in your head around isn't it because whereas your numbers are quite impressive and, and we've seen in Pontil in particular what, what what's the potential? You know, how much are we not getting because of David Lloyd and people like that? And how much are we not getting because people can't afford it? And how much are we not getting just they just don't know. And we do we do have the figures in terms of what we uh, class as the total addressable market and, and our market share in each of the areas. So we've that we've done the work on each of our locations across the portfolio to see what we feel is identified to be our our percentage of the market, and uh, and we we rate very highly in those areas. So if share, I may be cheeky, Chair and Chief, outside of this meeting, can you share those figures? Yes, please? Yeah. Because I'd, I'd be yeah. interested to see them. Yeah. But yeah, I just want to finish by saying I think you've done over the last couple of years, you've done a really, really good job. And I don't want anybody to think because the figures sort of go like that, they weren't your fault. Uh, and and in in fact, it was almost a perfect storm for it, wasn't it? I remember when you reduced the number of staff and they've gone away, and then it's come back up again, and you can't get the staff back again because there's a shortage everywhere. It's a perfect storm. So you're struggling on what. 
the good thing is that the money we've invested seems to be paying dividends. And there's no doubt about that. And, and I hope that when we complete, um, if we get the fuel prices back the way they should be, um, it should be a much better state. So I just want to say thank you. Yeah, I, I think, you know, in terms of your point about, you know, I think the figures clearly show where, where investment has gone in. It, it's certainly, you know, reaped the rewards. And, you know, it's like, you know, there's there's barely been a location that we've got across the portfolio that hasn't had some form of investment, whether it be through the main capital investment, whether it's been through the remedial. Certainly, you know, there's been improvements made right across the portfolio. And I just want to say it's not me boasting, but I actually wasn't the instigator of all the investment plans that we've got. It was done before I took the portfolio. Okay, I've managed it since then, but I didn't. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you, Matt. Thank you for your thoughts. It was just quite funny when I met the, the deputy leader, or uh, not deputy leader, deputy. <laughs> but I was um, Mark on the doorstep. I said to her, I'm going to ask some questions. Where's the information? <laughs> So that was what I was saying. So um, first of all, thank you. And I think what you've done is given us the background behind the report. And I'm going to be very cheeky and say, could we have had the report as well? Because actually that gave the, when I was looking through the report you gave us, yeah. and all the information with the figures and everything else, verify and thinking, where's that? Where's that? And it's, you know, it is impressive. And it is also shows how difficult it is in the time it has been, but also delivering better services altogether. And I think a lot of us are uh, going back to um, giving all kinds of different ways and means that people can enjoy leisure. You know, recall why we ever had leisure centres was because of swimming pools. And then everything else was an add on. And swimming pools cost a fortune to run. And I think you've done very well in actually adding all these different uh, ways that people can enjoy themselves and keep fit and everything to actually keep down the cost um, of the actual running. Because I know when I was at Pinedale, looking after, which I did in the portfolio, the cost of heating and all the things to do with swimming pools. And you have to keep it going. You can't just turn it off for the night and go away. You've got to keep it going. So thank you for all that. I would like a copy if you could send a copy. It would be yeah. quite nice to have a look. Yeah. Uh, first of all, it's it's interesting when you think about Peelands and Bay. People always like new things. And so could we have some more money spent in Freddie and Hexham, please? Yeah. on the list? Yeah, well, I was going to say, I, I think in terms of the, the from the remedial budget, uh, obviously we have to, it, 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 it would be so goes so far and also we, we have that in place for, for certainly for around emergencies but where we can we invest in, in various different centres. Uh, Pruda has been identified as somewhere where we would like to spend uh, money and as and when um, money is available from the regional budget we will look to make some improvements there but in terms of Hexham um, okay. as I've sort of like pointed out in the presentation is that we are from the County Council from the remedial budget will be investing in the redevelopment of the um, cafe area uh, down in the bowling, which is where the soft play is, and out of Northumberland, we're investing in the new equipment, um, the actual play frames, as it were, for the soft play. Yes, I think, I mean, when she's quite new, um, but it's quite much older. Yeah. Um, can I just say, first of all, about older people, those who are over 65, like or not? I suppose you're 65. I do in the garden. <laughs> But actually, I do Zoom, but, but you'll find in the rural areas a lot, lot of private enterprises set up. Um, I mean, shops of Zoom have about three different, four different ways of I do Zoom, but got four different uh, people who actually provide leisure facilities. And you'll find that right across, and especially in smaller areas, but you know, there's plenty of people who will do. Um, so, you know, a lot of people do do it. Yes? Yeah? Is it birthday? Yeah. Is it seven weeks? Is it the difference? Don't be up. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 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 it's actually, 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 it's actually,
Um, anyway, going back, but there is lots of opportunities. And I think a lot of it is, is actually having fun with a lot of older people yeah. and just uh, forgetting about what, what you're doing and just enjoying it. Um, can I just say, moving forward, and this is always a concern with, um, as Jeff mentioned, um, about the cost, rising cost of everything. And I hate to say it, but costs always go up and never seem to go down. And we've got a lot of people who are going to find it very difficult to access um, leisure facilities in the coming year or two years. So are there any benefits? Because we usually have a card at Tango. We card benefits for those people who are on benefits or whatever um, to access um, a cheaper rate. Um, yeah. That's one question. The other thing is that the... Um, on television today, in fact, or the radio today, um, was about people not being able to access or pay to have their computers um, reboot and actually pay for their online access. So I just thought whether that was something that you could think about. I mean, we have one in one of our halls. That's something you could access, which would be an extra privilege for people who are members. I mean, on, on the IT perspective, I think that would be a a, a challenge for us. Uh, well, yes, yeah, I'm yeah, just saying. Which, which, suggesting. Yeah, but 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 certainly with regards to pricing, so I'll just touch on. So we do actually have already have a, a concessionary price. Yeah. Uh, so so we do have that. Our membership um, pricing structure is 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 structured in a way that we have you know discounted rate for let's say the over 65s. We have a, a, a the junior membership. That is what we do with with adult with all membership. In terms of our general pricing, um, this year in 22-23 was the first time we'd actually increased our membership prices for four years. So we trying to be as um, generous as we can in terms of our pricing policy. Uh, but as you say, prices always go up; they never go down. Uh, and this year was the, the, the had to had to break with that in terms of prices, and, and it's looking likely that we'll have to increase prices going forward to, to, to try and keep up with things as long as we stay further behind. Can I just ask one more question just around about that? So are you finding that the more wealthy areas are actually joining rather than the areas where there's deprivation? So we have concerns because that's one of the areas where we want to make people help them with their health and well-being. To, to be honest, no. And I, and I think actually, you know, without naming any particular areas or centres, I think, you know, if you look at our statistics and you look at some of our largest centres and memberships, it's like, you know, we, we are penetrating in some of those areas that you might be might be talking about. So I think uh, we're, we're very competitively priced, I think, um, especially when you consider that, you know, we're, we're almost, you know, three star prices, but five star product. Mm -hmm. I think that's that's pretty much how we like to see ourselves. So, you know, we've, we've got a five star product, but we are actually charging very, very reasonable prices for that. Um, so, so, yeah, I think we, we are so in terms of our pricing. Um, it, and the fact that our membership is continuing to grow mm -hmm. would indicate to me at the moment, despite the fact that, you know, we're seeing higher rates of, um, of cancellations now, um, within 22, 23, with the reasons being it's affordability, but actually, despite that, we're still outpacing um, isolation, so we're still growing, which would indicate to me that actually we are a very affordable product. I think we were just coming at that with the fact yeah, that we're, we're still in, we're still in the very mild October. Yeah, <laughs> so 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 we're, we're not we're not blinking to the challenges that come over the winter period. Yeah. No, I think that's what I'm after. Yeah, yeah. yeah. thanks, Jeff. Awesome. Um, so some report. Um, in the post-COVID regulations mean you can't um, recirculate waste warm air, um, but it, it also says that um, Berwick has a new huge waste recovery system. Um, and the other leisure centres be retrofitted with a similar waste recovery system? Any plans to do that? Some of them do. Um, and we, we're just going through a uh, a revised environmental plan at this particular point in time, um, obviously to try and reduce our utilities costs. So I think we've always been very uh, conscious of where we've been with code regulations and bringing in fresh air and not bringing in circulated air. Um, I think because of the current costs involved and the relaxation of the code regulations, that's a bit of what we are doing now with the NCT copy team. Um, so where, where sites have 
an hour for it to recirculate what on earth. That's what we're doing. And so, so we've gone through a period where we, we are doing that switching them back on. The retrofit to the sites that haven't got it. Not being an expert in that in that area, I would imagine would be a significant amount of money to do that. Okay, so the ones that already have it haven't been using it. Haven't been used. Going to start using yes. it again. Yeah, it's, a, it's that it's that balancing act between COVID and still still in the, still in around um, and and it's going to get worse if you all look at the news um, and the environmental management and being responsible in environmental management to, to, to try and reduce our costs. Mm -hmm. So, for example, our swimming pool will. Temperatures are, are, are slowly, um, so it should be dropped by a uh, <laughs> where we can, <laughs> by, where, where we can by, by, by up to one, up to one and a half degrees in, in some in some sites. Um, but I will I will caveat that with the role within the air support and grid operational guidance. We, we did spend a lot of money, didn't we, on on, on Anik and looking at the ground source. That was my the question. It came a lot more expensive than we thought was coming. Yeah, to. Yes, that was my question. Um, um, yeah. Because uh, it took ages to put that ground source. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Who paid? Did you put? Was that out of your own budget? No, that was councils. Oh. I'm just curious. I'm curious about that. So how do you cost effect that kind of investment? Because we pay for it. Yeah. I don't. I didn't quite understand it. I must say, when I asked the question about it, I got the most difficult I can, answer. I can probably answer that. Go on. Because it came. It came to cabinet as a, as a uh, capital proposal. Uh, the payback period was. Extensive. Uh, it was something like twenty years for for Eva, but it was deemed to be because it did break even, and because it was right for the environment, we took the decision to go ahead and do it, which was paid for by county council um, um, and building the things. Um, but in fact, there was a problem. I can't remember what the problem was, but it was a problem which probably put it over budget. So it's probably going to be something like. 30 years before we get a payback. But if I went back and was asked to make the same decision again, I would still make it. Because as the more expensive fuel becomes, the more the better the figures will that be. That was basically the question. Is it a, has it been a cost effective measure? It, it, it's it, looking, you, it, you we saw, saw the breakdown, had to approve it all, went through all the sausage machine and all this. That's interesting. Thanks, Ryan. I'm not a member. I mean, I am um, with a private gym. gym. You mentioned concessionary rate. I have forgotten that there was the ones where I look again. We'll have a conversation <laughs> afterwards. <laughs> we did that in Old Town, so when we built the new track, we did all that work. Yeah, you only were. because of it was value for money, actually. Yeah. Um, yeah. Because of the cost of well, the yeah. There's two or three things that could be what's saving for future, future, spend, future proofing, something like that. Yeah. I mean, obviously, we've. we've yeah. Part of the, the, the sort of green initiatives for, for the buildings is that they obviously ferret the saddle the solar panels with the roof. We've had installations at, at the one. Um, so there's, there's been a good one day you're going to say put it away. Let me say, put it <laughs> not good here. I've told you before. <laughs> Next, the first one we're going to call Bosch. So we didn't, didn't answer that. Sorry. Yeah, so I got the impression that the ones that don't have it won't be getting it away. Source, that's fine. Um, I wanted to check that I got my head around the figures correctly. I started the presentation by saying that um, um, a sports facility uses still at 70 to 80 percent of pre so presumably that's national. That's national, yeah. And it says in your report that we're mentioned numbers are back to your mentioned numbers are back to pre pandemic levels. Over, 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 yeah, yeah, right. yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. So I think that from, from every 14 percent, I think it was. For the fitness membership, it's 14% above three. So I was just wondering if you could tell me what you meant when you said that um, softening of changing areas is required for female members. Well, well I think in terms of, um, for, for example, up until um, quite recently, we weren't produ pro providing soap and things in the shower areas, and, uh, and some of them probably need a bit of a, just a, just a bit of redecoration, if you like, and uh, just sort of making it. A more validated changing area compared to the quality of the spa. So we've put in some very high quality spas and retrofitted some high quality spas, but the changing rooms wouldn't necessarily be as modern as the as the actual spa product itself. Matching our, our changing facilities to, to match the high quality of the spa. Uh, Daniel, just a quick one, Chair, on page 19, what's in 
touch on what is BFC? BFC was the, the company that we used to, to, to collect our, um, our electronic payments, our membership payments. So um, both all of our direct debits were collected by an external company. Um, so we ceased that, that partnership uh, and collect all of that. Thanks. I had um, two questions um, about how does Active Northumberland tend to um, interact better with people with confidence or disability issues? I, I can use myself as an example. Um, it's often discussed at LimFit and that some of us wouldn't have the confidence of going to a gym and using a piece of equipment uh, without some guidance. Uh, does Active have any plans on trying to improve? Yeah, I, I mean, it, one of the reasons that we we invested in the men, membership experience advisors is is exactly one of those you know those areas is that you know, we do bespoke things um, across all of our site, sites. We work on a on an individual basis with with particular you know, customers and members, um, whether it be casual or, or whether it be members. So, um, you know, for example, you know, we have some. Uh, particular instance where we have somebody who um, where we actually look after their, their assistant dog um, while they take a swim and things like that. So you know we can do we can do anything on an individual basis not to the reason but certainly we're always open to what we to make a we do that. We've had some very difficult individual people with real difficulties with and, and very expensive difficult to deal with but I know we do. I mean in terms of disabilities generally it's like you know we We've um, invested in the buildings. We've made sure that they've been appropriate for, for various different disabilities. Um, things like, you know, we've reinvested in, in, in new hoists and things for the pool. Um, we've made it uh, easier accessibility through the turnstiles and things like that. We've been making sure that we restrict um, access through to, to certain areas of the building that now actually let people go, go in and use them without paying. But uh, we're making sure that we, we adapt for, for that particular usage. And also the changing places, um, change rooms that we've been putting locations that we've been refitting and giving new examples so on the top of that we are we are exploring um how to use personal trainers and in our sites and 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 to educate people around if we do introduce personal trainer it's 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 a, it's individual to individual so it'll be a, a, a member of our team that will allow you to reach whatever you want to reach that that session will be will be particular to you so at this particular point in time, all of our team members will give you a program and say, we do that program. And this will just allow um, the, the team member to really understand um, your requirements, your personal requirements and tailor made a program to suit you. It's not all about reaching the, the goal, the goal level status. It's about what, what do you want to achieve and, and how, how we're going to assist you to get to where you want to be. Thank you. And I just have one more question. I think this is more. Um, about um, how are we going to attract more people to rural areas that's got some distance to try and two sports centres and facilities? How are we going to service and accommodate? How are we going to do that? You tell me. <laughs> <laughs> I think as we've mentioned that we are doing a data review measure. Um, and those uh, dynamics are really important about where we are at um, and considering how we do that because we've got the locations that we've got, we've got the investment that's been made and it has been a significant investment that it can be cancelled and we need to maximise the use of all of these facilities um, and part, part of that is about looking at how do we encourage um, people to see the added value of taking part which is the first thing and then how do we support them to get there. Um, so it crosses a number of issues around the health and policy, the human policy, and accessibility, um, the location, the inclusion thing, which you've which you've touched on there. So um, there is a there is a review that will start to unpack some of where do we go now um, and access to facilities and it might be council parliament around use of other locations in the in the local communities that become part of that network it's leisure leisure development and um, so yes yeah, it's, it's about what we've got now which is kind of labeled as the leisure offer but what else 
and how else can we extend then what we do? That's that's coming through the system. That's coming through to uh, scrutiny. Yeah, no, that's fine. I have one question just to see what that I know that some of the schools drop down to going to my area. It's come. And I just wondered, um, have you got all the schools back? You say you've got 23 schools. That, that's through our schools program, not cool. not through not through the swim. So not the swim, the swim, the swim yeah, I think it's very through, separate yeah. to the actual yeah, school sorry, program. Yeah, that. but we've got the, the school things. games organising groups. Yeah, and uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. So you're working with 23 schools. I know we've got some other special providers. Um, is there a big? Is there a hole there, or is there a big area where you could extend? Um, so I don't know. It's just that yeah, we we have we we. We've increased the number of schools this year, um, so we, we did see a, a, a number drop off um, two years ago. We've seen an increase this year. Our, our, our school's provision in terms of teaching PE um, is, is quite unique because we're actually, uh, as far as I'm aware, the, the sort of only provider in the county that's providing that on, on, on a top basis, if you like. They're using um, fully qualified teachers as opposed to just sports trainers, so, uh, so they are sports and teachers uh, and I think you know one of the things that I think was a real bonus for us and, and one of our unique selling points um, during the pandemic is that actually our teachers were supporting the schools that we were working with and were still continuing to, to deliver activity and supporting the schools with their with their teaching which obviously no other provider could do unless you were a qualified teacher so um, so we, we, we're quite proud of what we did during that period with our with our teaching uh, so do you, I'm just going to say, just a bit sort of, do you, do you offer, I mean, as well as schools like Academy groups, do you offer something like this council Academy that all the schools use it? I'm just. Yeah, so the schools, the school, yeah, so the schools that we, the schools that we work with, we do actually offer um, discounts with uh, the program through uh, Frank East uh, and through the teachers and we do actually have a specified program and discounts for, for various different activities and things. So, so there is a program already in place for that, yeah, with those schools that we work with. And it becomes one of the unique setting points of, of working with it. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Um, there's a new report that um, working on a Commonwealth Games Legacy Program. I'm just wondering if um, it's been launched since that report was written. That that was delivered. Yeah. So yeah. basically, there um, that that happened back in. I'm trying to remember when it happened. Now you've caught me on the spot there. Um, but yeah, that was delivered at, at the Annette Gardens, I think it was, and there was. Uh, I think we had. It, it was several hundred people that we were part of, part and parcel on that. It's all finished now. That's that's the oh, yeah. thing. I also just say that um, if you're able to tell me where the gaps, if you, the report says we're looking for um, well-being, needs, uh, if you're able to tell me where the gaps in your coverage are, I'm trying to help to fill them. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I, 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 I haven't got those to, on, on the top yeah, of my yeah. top, tip of my tongue, but I certainly would love to have a conversation with you afterwards. And uh, yeah, yeah, we could definitely. Yeah. And also, yeah. if, if also if you're happy to um, give me more information about the recycling program strategy. Yeah. Thank you. Any more questions? Um, so thank you very much um, for your presentation and um, you could share the, the gaps in the market that Des mentioned and uh, this report to have shown we will do that in the these presentations uh, okay. Okay. thank you very much yep. thank you, you. Item number five, the Communities and Players Scrutiny Committee Work Programme, which is 31 to 36. Yeah, uh, the next meeting is on the 7th of December. Uh, and we look into the rental agreements and um, A couple of items that have been added since the last meeting. Um, three of the constructed may have come through for the rental January, and Oxford have come through, but I've tried that one. Firefighters before February and uh, 
So you can see the full book program has got any more gaps. Yeah, can I say, I was talking to Mark earlier about this. Um, Saturday, this is in the area. Actually, got a picture. And we are having concerns about Saturday in the area because it's actually dark again. Um, so, because we look at it, I know we do have, obviously, we have standby services which are help and financial help from the council to make them sustainable. Um, but we need to revisit those because. The, the obviously the cost going up to be to ensure that there is access to our services. We did put it forward. I didn't get very far. Um Maybe because of the project it obviously did have to be before you um, to talk about the complete consultation if you remember. Um that's going to process now. I contact those same officers again after you raised it with the chair. Yeah. And uh, they said it's going to the support to ensure that they were back to the shop. Well, we had because it originally. So it's to be of our wills to put it onto the program, program level. Because, I mean, I think we used to have, and I think Gordon, you'll be able to recall, we used to have a bus, bus service working group. The working group, yeah, because subsidy working group, whatever. The subsidy yeah. working group. And actually, it was very important because it was ensured that the subsidy actually being spent where it was needed um rather than you know, one person costing a fortune it was all done 60 tons it? Sorry? In one journey 60 tons yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and i think that we that's the type of thing we need to have a look at so the strategy might be there but maybe we could have a look at the the, the cost again of the subsidy because everything's changed when it was something like 200 2015, 16? Yes, it was that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Partly because the government cut down the fuel subsidy scheme. Yeah. And also, we decided that rural areas should be longer journeys with subsidies than, uh, mm -hmm. than urban areas where there was much greater use. Mm -hmm. Basically, anything open to bottles was subsidised. Mm -hmm. um, so it'd be interesting looking again at that. You have to reach for the model to come through. I'll, I'll check with officers to see where we are with it. It was imminent when I last asked, was obviously a few weeks ago. But it doesn't mean to say that further moves couldn't come to that. We were very upset with you. That would be the problem. If you can have further work to go on with that, then you can respond. I'm actually looking at, looking at, I mean, in rural areas, people are finding the cost of actually transport with their cars and everything else going up. And actually, we need to make sure that people can access transport. And with the subsidy for the cost of fuel and everything, all of it, we need to look to make sure that we can get people to go to the leisure centre. I'm not going to speak there. Everything can be provided. It's important that, for instance, it doesn't get cut in the budget, for instance. So there's all kinds of things coming forward. And I think it's something very important to have there. We'll see where the report is. It's going to be a while for me to ask for a presentation, see what's in the report, and then some of the work for that. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah, now we're at the point on the um, tree and woodland strategy. I was concerned about the, uh, the lovely area council meeting to hear that the tree openers are no longer the resorts available to uh, local to members and local uh, areas for the council. There's some concern over that because um, it was described as a resource issue. I said I would raise this at the appropriate level. I wonder if I could say that when we get this, I'm hoping to get a proper explanation of how we access expert advice on trees. But the data is not on this small bar with a lot of concerns were raised. And at this very time, when I'm going to lose the tree officers and the availability of local members, the local area council, there was concern expressed about that. Is there the, the planning? Uh of the planning side of the council were employing external contractors to do any tree works work they now because there was no capacity within the council in house so, yeah. um, that is a proper explanation absolutely. I think. Yeah. 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 Um, you mentioned that I started back on meeting Helen Hine tomorrow to show the extent that is going on. I even brought it up the I back with us. 
a farmer near me. He was clueless. He said, I thought those trees had been hit by lightning. I'm just saying a lot of people are clueless to what is actually happening out there. We're going to lose a third of the tree. I think it is important. This in terms of reference, as the um, first term of reference is to maintain an overview of the county council acted in a firm. Third one is uh, which one you would have discussed. Two star at this Great. Um, is there any other urgent business? Very much, everybody. Please so turn the camera off before we start. Oh, right. Okay.